if I were to ask you, or any random person, who was the most brilliant man of the modern era, what would be the answer? The answer, of course, for most people, would be Albert Einstein. He is viewed as the man who changed mathematics and the way we perceive the universe. Most of the now widely accepted work in higher mathematics after Einstein was based on his theories. What if I were to tell you that there was another man that lived when Einstein did? A man who accomplished more than Einstein could dream of. A man who challenged all the theories Einstein proposed. A man whom Einstein actually agreed with in 1920. But this fact seems to go largely unnoticed. This man has been accused of all sorts of things. He was accused of everything from being a mad scientist to being some kind of wizard and was seen as a heretic to modern science and mathematics. He was villainized in 1941 through cartoons. In the first of Max Fleischer's Superman cartoons, Superman fought a mad scientist bearing this man's name. There are many quotes of his that contradict other quotes, so much so that it's hard to know if some of them are real. This man is someone whom science wanted to forget and whom all bankers of the time cut off funding to. This man died penniless and alone, with only pigeons to keep him company. One of his last projects was a new theory of gravity. According to FBI documents acquired via the Freedom of Information Act request, the sum of this man's possessions consisted of about two truckloads of material and approximately 30 barrels and bundles which were seized upon his death in 1943 by agents of the now defunct Office of Alien Property Custodian. One document states that it is reported to have some 80 trunks in different places containing transcripts and plans having to do with experiments. This man's research was seen as so dangerous that it has never been declassified by the government. This man was a physicist with more formal training in the field than Albert Einstein, who was a patent clerk. This man had a photographic memory and spoke six languages. He showed genius at an early age and was able to perform integral calculus in his head, though his teachers thought him to be cheating. Did he accomplish anything with this genius? This one man invented radio, AC power, which is used worldwide today, laser, radar, x-ray, wireless communication, particle beam weaponry called Star Wars technology, which has only recently been admitted by our government in a video I will link to you, wireless electricity, which has only recently been replicated, and poorly, I might add, by the self-proclaimed geniuses at MIT. Cellular technology, the electron microscope, microwave technology, hydroelectric generators, neon lights, fluorescent lights, brushless synchronous and induction motors, bladeless turbine and pump, remote control, electronic robotics, just to name a few. He predicted things like the Blackberry in 1909. Before the 1900s, he demonstrated remote control boats. Who was this man? Nikola Tesla. Why was this man so dangerous? Tesla said things like this about Einstein's work. It is a magnificent mathematical garb which fascinates, dazzles, and makes people blind to the underlying errors. The theory is like a beggar, clothed in purple, whom ignorant people take for a king. Its exponents are brilliant men, but they are metaphysicists, meaning they deal with the supernatural rather than scientists. My second discovery was a physical truth of the greatest importance. As I have searched in the entire scientific records in more than a half a dozen languages for a long time without finding the least anticipation, I consider myself the original discoverer 
of this truth, which can be expressed by the statement, there is no energy and matter other than that received from the environment. Today's scientists have substituted mathematics for experiments, and they wander off through equation after equation, and eventually build a structure which has no relation to reality. Now what is the ether? Some think of it as a firmament, which our universe exists within. Yes, just like the firmament spoken of in the Bible book of Genesis. Tesla said a good example for such an interaction becomes apparent in gravitation, which should rather be named universal compression. I think the material bodies do not gravitate between each other, but it is the ether that makes one material body to press to another. We wrongly call this phenomenon gravitation. The stars, planets, and all the universe appeared from the ether when some part of it, due to certain reasons, became less dense. Einstein's theories were based on the non-existence of the ether. What is not presented much in media is that Einstein himself doubted his theories on multiple occasions. In 1920 he said, but on the other hand there is a weighty argument to be adducted in favor of the ether hypothesis. To deny the ether is ultimately to assume that empty space has no physical quality whatsoever. The fundamental facts of quantum mechanics do not harmonize with this view. Recapitulating, we may say that according to the general theory of relativity, space is endowed with physical qualities. In this sense, therefore, there exists an ether. According to the general theory of relativity, space without ether is unthinkable. For in such space, there not only would be no propagation of light, but also no possibility of existence for standards of space and time, measuring rods and clocks, nor therefore any space-time intervals in the physical sense. Media presents the idea of Einstein-based mathematics as fact. We are told that this is concrete and that the entire scientific community is in total agreement. This could not be farther from the truth. In fact, calling it mathematics at all is misleading. These are theories with no absolutes. There are two divided camps, one that believes that there is an ether and one that doesn't. All we are presented with on television is the theories that rely on no ether existing and then replacing the ether with things like dark matter to try to make all the theories work. So what is modern science? The belief in theories based on a man who doubted his own theories which incorporate dark matter which these scientists are not even sure exists. What am I trying to say here? Science does not give you or have all the answers. When you hang on every word of people like Stephen Hawking, know that there are many people whom are just as brilliant who completely disagree with them. Now back to Nikola Tesla's life. What kind of man was Nikola Tesla? Tesla is best known for the War of the Currents against Thomas Edison, who was a Freemason. Tesla initially worked for Edison. Edison promised him money for work that Tesla did, but refused to pay him. Tesla eventually quit Edison's company and with George Westinghouse presented the world with AC power. What exactly was at stake here? To put it simply, DC power would have only been available to the very wealthy. It was expensive and required much more equipment between distances. AC power, on the other hand, was much cheaper and would provide everyone with affordable electric power, even in rural areas. Thomas Edison went on a smear campaign of Tesla and AC power, saying that it was dangerous. He tried to prove this to people by electrocuting live animals, including elephants, in front of audiences. Westinghouse was going bankrupt trying to fight this propaganda. 
but the company was saved by Tesla. He tore up his royalty contract with George Westinghouse in order to save the company from bankruptcy and the alternating current system from destruction. Tesla stood to lose over $12 million in royalty payments. Now which of these scientists sounds like a madman to you? Now Tesla experienced a lot of odd, bad luck in his life. His lab burned down to the ground for which he had no insurance. He was wrongly cheated out of patents like the radio, which were only restored to him after his death. The man who invented the modern world and created all his inventions to help his fellow man somehow died with no money and is remembered as a madman, if he is remembered at all. His dream was wireless free energy for the entire world, and by all accounts, it worked. But his funding was pulled by J.P. Morgan, and all other bankers also refused to loan him money. In rare television shows like the one I will link you at the end of this video, and that you can view on my favorites, the government is now admitting that Tesla invented devices that could cause earthquakes, change the weather, shoot missiles out of the sky to end all wars, and provide clean, free energy for the entire world. Tesla was a brilliant man and said of other scientists, the present is theirs, the future is mine. For all his brilliance, what Tesla could not foresee is that the devices he intended to stop war with and help mankind would be used for the exact opposite purposes. Perhaps he hoped that we were better than that. On this official government website, which I will link in the information below this video, is a press conference from 1997, and this is Secretary of Defense William S. Cohen speaking. Cohen answers the press saying, and I quote, Others are engaging even in an echo type of terrorism whereby they can alter the climate, set off earthquakes, volcanoes, remotely through the use of electromagnetic waves. So there are plenty of ingenious minds out there that are at work finding ways in which they can wreak terror upon the nations. It's real. And that's the reason why we have to intensify our efforts. And that's why it's so important. End quote. Now who is the only country with a device like this that confiscated Tesla's research? That would be us. It is called HARP. Tesla was not a madman. He was simply someone who went as far as you can go with real science. He was abhorred at the idea that his inventions might be used to hurt his fellow man. He gave up money and fame to stand for what he believed in. He turned down the Nobel Prize because they planned to award both him and Edison. Can you blame him? Tesla hated war, while Einstein fully supported certain wars and was a strong supporter of Zionism. Tesla was brilliant and he simply invented the modern world. Einstein invented nothing of any benefit to man. Tesla called Einstein a fool. Einstein eventually agreed with him. The world has followed Einstein. Do you see a problem with us? At least Einstein could admit that he may be wrong and that he was not dealing with absolutes, which shows that he is a lot smarter than today's scientists. Why is modern science, which condemns religion as relying on faith, based on theories that require just as much faith or more as religion while providing none of the other important answers, like why am I here, or where will I go when I die? Why is science as rigid and dogmatic as religion when it condemns religion for being the same? Why doesn't everyone know who Nikola Tesla is when you turn on a television, get a weather report, listen to the radio, talk on the cell phone, start your car? Tesla's inventions are there, staring back at you. Who was the smartest man of the modern world? 
Nikola Tesla, and he believed in God's firmament, the ether spoken of in Genesis. Maybe you should look into it as well. Tesla once said, the gift of mental power comes from God, divine being, and if we concentrate our minds on that truth, we become in tune with his great power. My mother had taught me to seek all the truth in the Bible. At the end of this video, I will link one of the TV specials that is aired on Nikola Tesla. Is everything in it as far as Tesla's personal life correct? Doubtful. They can't bury all the truth, though, and multiple cases of generosity by Nikola Tesla. They claim that free energy would have led to mind control. Just like Edison said that AC power was dangerous, they claim that Tesla himself canceled the Wardenclyffe project, which is a bold-faced lie. What they can't hide is that Tesla's inventions worked, and he intended for them to benefit man. You could not put a meter on free energy, though. And there was and is a lot of money in natural fuels for a few of the world's elite who own the companies that would profit off them. To think that things like the Gulf oil disaster need never have happened is very sad indeed. To think that the entire world thinks that Einstein and his disciples have it all figured out is even sadder. A patent clerk who invented nothing against a man who invented modern technology and gave credit to God. We chose the patent clerk whose theories have gone a long way in undermining God. All the while, Einstein kept occult Kabbalah literature on his work desk and practiced alchemy. And the scientists who scoff at God work with technology that Tesla invented. Sad. Very sad indeed. Where others claim to invent, Tesla would say he discovered things that were already there. What really is mathematics? It is the attempt to explain universal laws that are already there. Mathematical laws were there before we discovered them. No one discovered more things than Nikola Tesla. Could it be because Tesla knew something that the majority of those who call themselves scientists today did not? It is time you questioned everything. While the truth might be hard to find nowadays, it is well worth the effort. Will you ever figure everything out? Probably not. I know my simple mind has not. But you will have enough information to make a choice and support an educated decision. Why is all this information coming out now? To me, it is very simple. It was promised to us. Matthew 10:26 says, So do not be afraid of them. There is nothing concealed that will not be disclosed, or hidden that will not be made known. What I tell you in the dark, speak in the daylight. What is whispered in your ear, proclaim from the rooftops.